with their data-related challenges, really helps in setting up the analytical infrastructure straight from the office. Um, she's helped businesses become more data-driven, given that kind of focus that some, some businesses may be lacking in the big data world. And she'll be talking about how behavioural data um, is more widely used uh, in the future and how that will really impact credit scoring and what that means for both businesses and individuals. So please give a warm welcome to Aruba. Hi, as uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, so my name is Luba, and I'm a data scientist. I've been working as a data scientist for last uh, ten years, and a big part of my career, I uh, was working in finance industry. So when you say about finance uh, industry in relation to data, it's mainly related to uh, credit scoring. So. Uh, Credit scoring. Um, credit scoring is um, exists to minimize risks of uh, lenders uh, when they give uh, money to people uh, in order. To, uh, okay, they need to estimate the probability of a, a customer. Customer can be both individual and a company uh, to uh, be able to repay the money back. So um, usually. Uh, in uh, traditional financing uh, sector, companies uh, do it uh, based on uh, various transactional data they have. Previously repaid loans, uh, profit and loss statements, uh, credit bureau's information using uh, linear regression based models. Uh, how uh, artificial intelligence can help to improve this uh, process? Well, um, first of all, um, it improves uh, the accuracy of the results uh, by uh, being able to consider multiple factors and being able to uh, include uh, new data sources in order to uh, give more precise score to the customer. Also, um, it amazingly improves uh, market because um, right now um, the existing models divide markets into customers who are perfectly predictable in terms of um, the, the, the available data and customers who are totally not predictable and not being able to get access to any financial products at all. So um, AI by allowing um, uh, new data sources and their integration into the system uh, can uh, provide this access to financial products to the customers who are not able to get this access right now because they don't have much of uh, credit history. Uh, the main problems uh, with uh, moving forward uh, with integrating more machine learning algorithms 
uh, basically in regulations. Uh, all, everything connected to uh, Basel, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, all of them. Uh, and the approvals of these models by regulators. And also different laws connect, uh, different uh, law aspects connected to um, data privacy in different countries are also um, bits um, making the com more, more complex involving traditional uh, banking sector. So uh, what is so different with using artificial intelligence comparing to uh, traditional uh, credit scoring? It doesn't make an assumption that reality is linear. So it doesn't use linear algorithms to predict how, um, how good customer is. And um, it attempts uh, non... Um, Basically, it just like I said already, it allows to uh, apply to apply nonlinear uh, solutions to uh, problems and to populations that were uh, never uh, scored and uh, got access to uh, financial uh, products before. Uh, also, uh, one of these data sources is uh, customers' behavior. So, what is customer behavior? Uh, Behavior-based scores, they use, they use not only uh, credit uh, history of a customer, uh, but also um, personal data like marital status and human behavior. It means um, it can use, uh, by, by, by customer's behavior, people usually think Facebook. But it's not only social media and Facebook. It's also... Um, New look on transactional data, like for example, if you, how do you use your credit cards? If you use them in casino, if you use them to buy uh, equipment for extreme sports, if you use it in um, some areas um, that are uh, considered less safe, if you call a lot to customer service, uh, if you change your cell phone uh, number, uh, model of a handset, and uh, everything else. Everything can be taken into consideration to, uh, to um, establish, to estimate your credit worthiness. Where, where uh, companies get this data from? Well, uh, the, the most common source is uh, from the customer. So customer by signing up or downloading an application uh, or uh, using a web uh, application provides uh, companies with data. Personal data, cookies, uh, other uh, applications installed on a mobile uh, device. Um, other uh, location, um, geolocation data, contacts, uh, access to Facebook and other social networks. So all of these data combined can provide a huge data source and uh, tell a lot about the person and the company. So why use this data at all? What, does it, what is it good for, this customer behavioral data? Basically, the main, um, the, the, every, uh, the, the one single question it's supposed to answer is how much customer is a liar? What does it mean as a liar? It's uh, do you plan and assume you have an ability to, at least at the moment of applying, to pay back the lender? Uh, it doesn't mean that, it, that it's, it is fraud, because fraud is more straightforward. I mean, you say that your name is John and you're not John at the end. It's just straightforward. Uh, but saying, for example, that you have 10 customers when you only have one or not have at all, or saying that you worked in some company for 10 years when you actually didn't, or that you graduated from a specific university, it can say a lot about your credit worthiness. Uh, or if you change your address a lot. Or even a, a baseball team that you are a fan can be an indicator for being a more or less credit worse person. Uh, there was a study uh, in the University of Delaware and they looked for ways to predict the likelihood if a um, borrower will uh, pay back a loan. 
So uh, they uh, studied, um, they asked for uh, customers to provide a description why do they need a loan. And they analyzed the results. And they found that the customers who used words like debt-free, low interest rate, after tax, minimum payment, and graduate were much more likely to pay uh, back the loan. <laughs> Despite the customers who used the words like God, promise, uh, will pay, thank you, and, and stuff like this, there were much, they, they had a higher probability to not pay back. Uh, so basically everything that you uh, save with using your own name or your company name on the uh, internet can be used as, uh, for web scrapping, for, uh, uh, to decide how much money can a lender give you and in, on what terms. Uh, not having, um, a lot, I've heard a lot of times that not having, I, I don't have a Facebook profile, so I, I'm safe. It's, it's not exactly true, uh, because not having the data can be a sign of one of two things. First of all, algorithms that use uh, data and they just see that non-existent, non-existent, non-existent give less uh, accurate results. And person who doesn't have the data can be rejected just as well. And the second one, uh, if a person is uh, that private, it can be an indicator for a fraud. Because if you say you're uh, John Smith, and there is no John Smith not on Facebook, not on LinkedIn, and not on any, uh, any place over there, it may be just a fraud. Uh, well, how exactly uh, artificial intelligence uses this data? So instead of considering one uh, uh, variable uh, at a time as in traditional uh, linear models regression, it uses a nonlinear interaction between multiple variables, uh, which is usually uh, can be done by a, a professional, but takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, precious time, I would say, if, we take, if we're talking about market that constantly changes these days. Um, another topic here, which is more like a concern, is a feature selection. There are a lot of algorithms out there right now available for automatic feature selection, which is great because you have like thousands of them, all transactional data and um, social media and marketing data. They all combined, they generate thousands of features. Uh, so go manually through all of them is highly uh, un unlikely to happen. Um, and automated algorithms are really great, uh, but it can be um, problematic from a point of view, uh, from, um, from a perspective that it, it, it can be, um, there are a lot of chances for overfitting, meaning uh, your algorithm will work on this specific data perfectly, but only on this specific data and um, slight changes in distribution. So any of the amazing features that are in there can lead to unpredictable behavior on the whole model. Well, and there are a few possible solutions, as I see it, uh, to uh, still use artificial intelligence and credit scoring. Um, first one is to use hybrid models meaning you combine uh, artificial intelligence machine learning uh, models with, uh, uh, let's say, um, business rules set defined by an industry expert that can uh, come on the top of uh, machine learned algorithms and, um, and just uh, navigate in AI which algorithms to use in which case till uh, complete learning is finished and uh, system can be fully automated. Or um, other um, a con a concept is uh, to replace uh, traditional scorecards part by part with machine learned uh, models in order to evolve the existing system um, incrementally. Well, there are some case studies. Um, uh, there is a startup called Air.io, um, and they generate kind of shufa uh, for uh, customers based on the data that the customers provide to them. 
the more data you provide, the more accurate score it generates. So, and then they allow you to download the score and use it for different purposes, for loans, for rents, for anything. Um, and they basically use only behavioral data. The other interesting example is micromoney.pro. Um, they uh, do microfinancing in, um, in, in Asia, and um, they totally rely on social media and behavioral data. Um, they discovered the market with uh, almost 80% of people uh, not having access to um, credit products. So what they did, they uh, developed an application, and when you download it, you uh, allow to uh, micro money access to every data stored on your phone and on your Facebook. And based on this, they were able to uh, build a scoring system that were um, generating a probability of default within minutes and being able to repay customers um, at the same day. Um, they uh, not only used this uh, behavioral data for credit scoring, but also for collection purposes. For example, if customer didn't pay, uh, they, uh, did, um, they used his Facebook pages in order to collect debts. Uh, for example, they did uh, shaming posts and uh, uh, contacted an uh, employee of a, of a customer in order to motivate him to repay his loan faster. Um, I would not recommend to do it <laughs> on every market, uh, but it's an interesting approach to um, behavioral credit scoring. So, um, right now in credit scoring as I see it, artificial intelligence do not replace still uh, human decisions, uh, but it does help experts to provide more precise decisions in uh, faster and, um, and improve it. Uh, also, it can help, uh, also behavioral data can help uh, to, um, to get uh, for different segments of population with limited access to credit to help get them this access. Um, and uh, last but not least point, uh, everybody should be very aware of the data they share where uh, internet, or mobile devices, and with who do they, uh, do they share it, because there are a lot of third parties that sell data and without any consent of customers. It can be used um, in best cases by uh, financial uh, service providers. But, but uh, by, by others as well. So um, thank you, and if you have questions. Thank you, Luba. Uh, very interesting, a good insight into uh, obviously credit scoring.